Hey everybody, Dan Monroe here from the Magnetic Lock. Not long ago, the actual hero robot from Lost in Space, that actor Bob May wore, was auctioned off. And now, here we are, just a couple of months later, where the long distance or stunt robot is also being auctioned. So I thought this would be a great time to go through the history of the long distance or stunt Lost in Space robot. Lost in Space ran for three seasons. They decided that the robot was going to do a little bit more special effect wise and it would be nice to have a, a stunt stand-in for the robot. So they created a long distance robot or stunt robot which was basically a lightweight fiberglass shell. It was not as detailed as the original robot. It was not designed for an actor to get inside. It was not as articulated as the regular robot. It was meant as a stand-in for special effects shots. The lineage of this robot is original because they used the original hero molds to make this stunt robot. They just did it in a way where it would remain extremely lightweight. This particular stunt robot was first seen in the opening sequences of the first third season show, Condemned of Space, where the robot is sucked out of the airlock into space. All of the shots of the robot floating around outside the main viewport, that's the stunt robot. He can also be seen battling androids and space destructors, hanging upside down in the junkyard in Junkyard in Space, which was the final third season episode. But most notably, he played the robot's evil twin in the Anti-Matter Man third season episode, where he was painted white and black and had a strange green mouth. The original castings, especially of the torso, were extremely, extremely rough, and you can see the back of it is very, very dented and rough looking, very strange. There's also a large door or hatch in the back of the robot's torso, which can be clearly seen in several episodes. And although this particular stunt robot didn't get very much screen time, the time that it did get was pretty effective. When Lost in Space was canceled, the stunt robot ended up in the possession of Greg Jean, who sadly has recently passed away. Greg was a brilliant, brilliant model maker and worked on all kinds of incredible Hollywood and television productions. At any rate, what was left of this particular stunt robot sat in one of his storage garages for years and years and years. In fact, in the early 80s, there was a Starlog magazine that had a picture of this stunt robot kind of shoved in the corner, all broken and destroyed looking. And back then, myself and everybody else pretty much assumed, oh, that's the actual hero robot. Little did we know at the time, that was the stunt robot. Interesting side note, in those pictures at Greg Jean's garage, in the armhole of the robot, there's this dinosaur head or something sticking out. We could never quite figure out what the heck is there a dinosaur head sticking out of the robot's arm socket for? Well, now we know that that was the head of Penny's turtle from the Lost in Space pilot, which was also recently auctioned off. Now we know. In 1985, Greg Jean took this particular stunt robot to a Starlock convention where he set it up and Billy Moomy was in attendance. And it's one of the first times I think that the public actually got to see uh, the long distance or stunt robot anywhere out in public. In 1992, this particular stunt robot was heavily featured in Bob May's Robot Memories videotape, where he discusses his career on Lost in Space. Bob May, again, is the gentleman who was the actor inside the actual hero robot on the show for three years. The back of this robot is really incredible. It contains autographs from just about everybody who worked on Lost in Space. The cast, some of the crew, really a nice addition to this prop. In 2003, this particular stunt robot was auctioned off in the Profiles in History auction. I don't know what it went for, but I would imagine it was a pretty penny. At the time of the Profile in History auction, the robot still basically looked the way Greg Jean had semi-restored it and was still pretty faithful to the way that it looked in the show. This might be slightly controversial, but this is just my opinion. 
In 2003, after the Profiles in History auction, the robot was restored by a gentleman who does restoration work. A fully articulated brain was put in, which it never had. This robot never had a neon mouth. It just had tubes in it, because it was cheaper to produce that way than making a second neon mouth that was lit from behind with just a simple bulb. Of course, these days it has an actual neon mouth because that's the way it was restored. And in my opinion, it should have been restored to the way it looked in the show. But unfortunately it wasn't. It was restored to look like the hero robot, exactly. Not really sure why that creative choice was made, but that's the way it went. This particular robot is very easily identified by its extremely tall legs. The fiberglass legs on this robot did come from the actual molds of the hero robot, but they were cast in fiberglass, so that's why they remained really tall looking. Where the hero legs, also cast from these molds, were cast in rubber, so they squished down. So you can always tell the stunt robot because it had very tall legs. In fact, I'd have to say that all of the toys ever produced of the robot had those long stunt robot legs. All the toys of all different sizes, they all had that particular look. After the 2003 restoration, the long distance or stunt robot ended up in the Science Fiction Museum Hall of Fame in Seattle, Washington, where it sat for years and years and years alongside a replica of Robbie and one of the original Tweaky robots from Buck Rogers in the 25th century. And that leads us to today, to Julian Auctions, where this particular stunt robot is once again on the auction block. We can only hope that wherever this robot ends up, it'll be well taken care of and maybe somewhere where we can once in a while peek in on it to see how it's doing. So I hope you enjoyed this brief retrospect on the history of the Lost in Space Long Distance or Stunt Robot. Thanks for tuning in and catch you later.